hey what's good everyone it is b aver here for another episode of just my opinion i really do appreciate you tuning in and today you know we're going to be talking about this avengers infinity war box office results for the opening weekend i did a little video yesterday for the uh, the estimated amount but of course you got to wait till monday for the actuals and also, if you're looking at me right now, you notice that I am not in my studio or my bedroom where I have everything set up. I am out of town right now. Um, I'll be back uh, in the coming weekend. That's one reason why I shot the video yesterday. So um, if the camera work is a little janky or the audio, um, I don't have all my equipment. I'm using a camera that is in my laptop right now. And I don't know, I've never used that before. And also to my right, I'm also recording on my phone just in case... Um, you know, things don't work out. I can have some type of backup or whatever. So, and a couple of videos ago, somebody was liking my comments. I appreciate it. Like, hey, Brandon, you know, don't tell nobody you out of town. You know, your friends may not, you know, be good. I was like, you know, I can trust my friends. They're like my brothers. And nobody going to break into my house. And even if they did, we got people there. Uh, but anyway, guys, we are here. Oh, also at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about, this is a uh, spoiler review. No, this is box office this is box office results for opening weekend for Avengers Infinity War. I'm also going to touch on Black Panther, but I'm also going to discuss spoilers for Infinity War as well. They just may come out. So I'm just letting you know that if you have not seen Avengers Infinity War, please cut the video off and then subscribe. Go check out Avengers Infinity War. Come back and then we can party and dance in the comment section and all that good stuff. And I got a little surprise for you guys at the end. It's not really a surprise, I guess, but I'm just going to do something a little different. See if it works. If, if we like it, hey, that's great. If not, you know, hey, we just going to keep it moving. But... The box office results for Avengers Infinity War is in. Yesterday, it was estimated at $250 million. I, told, I was like, okay, it's going to make $267 million opening if it meets everybody's expectations. So it was like two five zero 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 zero. Of course, you know, that's the estimated amount, right? And so then, like, what I was going to do is I was like, man, when I get off, because I'm up here for work uh, in, the, uh, in the north. I was like, man, or north of Texas. I was like, man, I'm not even going to look during the middle of the day in the afternoon. I'm just going to turn the camera on and this is going to surprise me. But I was like, I couldn't wait. So I looked and it said 258 earlier. And I was, but it still said estimated. I'm like, wait a minute, why did it go up $8 million? But it's still saying estimated. But now when I refresh my page and I'm setting everything up, the official amount for Marvel Studios Avengers Infinity War for box office opening weekend, baby, is $257 million, $698,100, wait, <laughs> I messed that up, $257,698,183, that is what's up, so guys, this breaks the record, it breaks the record in 2015, December 2015, where Star Wars The Force Awakens which was already a colossal amount that it broke. Um, it broke that. A lot of people were just saying, no, it's impossible. You know, Star Wars is, you know, generational this and all generational that. And we haven't had a movie in 10 years since the prequels and yada, yada, yada. But no, it looks like uh, Avengers Infinity War has taken that crown and I could not uh, be any happier. Um, so that's the domestic one. Right now, it's looking at $630 million, uh, worldwide. Um, and you know, that's cool too. Also guys don't pay attention to, in my opinion, don't pay attention to anybody that's, you know, being clickbaity saying, you know, Hey, Avengers infinity war broke box off, broke the opening weekend box office record worldwide. That is a stupid, pointless record. That means nothing. And I want to tell you why the reason why it means nothing is let's just say that when a movie is opening up on a weekend, right? And it's opening in, let's just say, 70 territories or 70 countries around the world. Okay, that's fine. So it has those 70 openings. But then the next week, another movie comes out and it's only opening in 65 territories. It's opening weekend. And then the next weekend after that, another movie is opening in 80 territories. You see, all films are not released at the exact same time or the exact amount of theaters at the same time. So if, if movie A has a bigger opening, you can say, well, okay, you opened it more territories at one particular time. Because Avengers Infinity War, that open, that doesn't open, it hasn't uh, opened up yet. That doesn't open uh, in China until uh, May the 11th. 
you know, so just don't pay attention to that. But we have the uh, the weekend actuals. Let's just go ahead and run through the top 10 real quick. So we got Avengers Infinity War, $257 million. A Quiet Place is still doing crazy things, bringing in another $11 million. Uh, that drop was only um, 47%. It's still in 3,500 theaters. The budget for that was only 17 million. Right now, it's at 235 million dollars worldwide, 148 million dollars domestically. So that just keeps on kicking butt, and um, you know I couldn't be happier. It's a great uh, movie. I'll feel pretty comes in at 8 million, uh, 8.1 million. It dropped 49 percent in 3,400 locations right now with uh, Amy Schumer. The budget was. Uh, Ooh, thirty-two million dollars, and it's only at twenty-nine million dollars worldwide. So that is not looking too great. I don't know how this movie is going to turn out. Uh, I don't know if this movie is going to be opening up overseas. But then again, this is I feel pretty, and this is mainly about uh, Avengers: Infinity War. Rampage uh, brought in another seven million dollars, and they had a big drop, sixty-four percent. Um, it opened two weeks before Avengers: Infinity War. Right now is at 335 uh, million worldwide. The budget was 3120. So you know my rule of three at the very minimum. A film needs to make at least three times the production budget, not the entire budget, because the produ this is a production budget at 120. Does not include marketing, so it needs to make around was it a uh, 360 million dollars worldwide to say that it had a respectable uh, profit, a, a respectable uh, return. So I think it may get there. This film should have, um, you know, got at least one hundred million dollars domestically, but it's only a seventy eight million dollars. But, you know, hey, we're going to keep it moving. Now, what has moved up? I think it, last week it was number eight uh, in the box office, but Black Panther um, is at number five. Like, this is crazy. It came out with February 16th, I believe. Uh, so that is over uh, two months ago, guys. And it is still not in the top 10, but it is still in the top five. This is a surprise to me. I knew that it was still going to be in theaters. I knew it was going to be in top 10. That's pretty much a given, but it brought in another $4 million. Now, there is this cat that is in my comment section. Uh, I don't know your name. I can't remember it off the top of my head. I may try to look it up right now. But you was debating me in my comment section uh, about two weeks ago. And I, I know I didn't do a, 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 a box office thing last week. I didn't, you know, really. It, it just, I wasn't excited about it. You was up here just saying in the comment section, nah, bro, you got it all wrong. What makes you think that uh, Black Panther is going to go from $5 million to $2 million? It hasn't dropped this much and blah, blah. And I just want to say, sir, you was right, okay? You was right. I was wrong. I wasn't pretending like I was some guru up here behind the camera, behind the mic or anything like that. But I was surprised. Uh, it, it it only dropped what? Oh, I lost my spot. It only dropped another shit. Wait a minute. That can't be right. Four percent. Wait a minute. Let me let me go here real quick. Weekend for Black Panther. So. Yeah, so the April 13th through April 15th, Black Panther had 5.7 million. Dang. And so it dropped 14% to 5.7 to 4.9 last week. And so, no, this is right. Uh, Black Panther uh, only dropped another 4%. It made $4.9 million last weekend, and this weekend it made 4.7. That's what's up. That's what's up right there. So, again, sir, I forgot your name. I don't remember. You kind of had a little attitude, but I'm not. Well, I, I, I don't know if you had an attitude. Maybe that's just the way I took it. Uh, but you was right, man. You know, Black Panther is is still making hella buku money. And we're going to talk more about Black Panther towards the end of or well, towards the middle of this video. We're going to keep on going. Super Troopers, I really don't care. I walked out of that film 3.7. Truth of Dare, 3.2 million. Uh, Blockers at number eight is uh, 2.9. Ready Player One is at 2.5. And Traffic did 1.6 coming in at number 10. Uh, Damn, I don't know what the budget was for that, but it only made six million dollars. I, I imagine that it was pretty cheap. Let me just look at uh, Ready Player One real quick um, by Steven Spielberg. Okay, so five hundred and forty-five million dollars worldwide. That's pretty good. That's that's really good. Uh, I mean, it's not like you know, like freaking amazing. Like oh my gosh, but you know, it's doing much well, be, the much well, much better overseas uh, than it is doing here in the United States of the Americas, uh, 130 domestically, 414 um, worldwide. I mean, Ready Player One 
production budget. I'm just curious. Uh, okay, this is a good source right here. Let me scroll down. Production budget was we yeah, have 175 million, so very expensive film, uh, rightfully so. Uh, 175 times three. I could do that. Why is not not working? 175 times three. 525 so my rule of three 525 it said 445 so hey you know what i'm saying that's what's up right there so let me just read this real quick audiences assembled worldwide as disney and marvel's avengers infinity war broke both the domestic opening weekend box office record and worldwide uh, that's a stupid record to me and it's wake the majority of films on the box office weekend chart failed dramatically uh fellow to marvel cinematic universe's black panther wait a minute let me read that again because that didn't make sense Okay, in its wake, the majority of films on the weekend box office chart failed dramatically. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the fellow Marvel Universe release Black Panther improved its position from eighth place last weekend. To, and that just goes to show a point that I'm about to make and talk about spoilers. Infinity War opening weekend beats the previous record of 247.9 million set by Star Wars The Force Awakens by just over $2 million. But it's also worth mentioning that Disney underestimated Black Panther's 202 million opening by nearly 10 million on Sunday. That is true because Black Panther's four day weekend was 242. The three day weekend was 202, but the estimated amount was like 191 and 192 or whatever, you know. But that still was up. The studio also underestimated Avengers performance by 7 million and underestimated Avengers Age of Ultron by 3.6 uh blah 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 that does not matter to me uh now additional domestic records note include the largest saturday um gross largest single sunday gross you know i don't wait a minute and internationally internationally infinity war delivered a monstrous 380 million dollars 72 percent of the international market the debut is the second largest of fate of the fury um uh it had an a cinema score of course Highlights for Infinity Wars International all time, 42 million in South Korea, 39.2 million in Mexico. I'm not going to read all that because I mean, I'm not saying that it's not important, but, you know, at the same time, let me just analyze this myself. This was from Brad Brevard. I, I do read his post for Box Office Mojo, uh, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this myself real quick. So that's what's up right there. Avengers Infinity War. Uh is now i tried to look up the production budget for infinity war and i can't find it if anybody can provide that information in the comment section i would appreciate it um you know how if you've seen my past videos uh you know i always like to do the open the showdowns that are on box office mojo uh, showdowns are going to be between star wars the force awakens jurassic world the avengers star wars the last jedi black panther and now avengers infinity war um, so the reason why is these, this is the opening weekend showdown. These are the best, the top six opening, uh, weekends of all time. These are possibly also the top biggest blockbusters of all time too. Excuse me. Besides Titanic and Avatar. So, um, yeah, so it has the opening weekend. Also in Finger's Infinity War has the most theaters open, uh, opposed to all these other ones at 4,474. Um, now some people think that. Well, it made more money because it was in more theaters. Not necessarily. That just means that it's easier for you to go see it, okay? Instead of driving uh, five minutes down the road, you may... Oh, no. Instead of driving two minutes down the road to go to your local theater, you may have to drive five minutes down the road. And what I mean by that is, like, like uh, my apartment in Dallas, uh, I, I have a movie theater, literally. I I'm, I'm not exaggerating, guys. It's literally right next door to me, right? So I, 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 it's like a 30 second walk, not a drive, a 30 second walk to the theater down the street, about a block is another theater right there. So what that means is, is where, uh, when a film opens in more theaters or less theaters that, and if it's a big opening, like Avengers Infinity War, those two theaters that are in one block between each other, it may be both at those locations. But in some cases, it may only be at this location B or this location A or something like that. So I can still get to either theater, you know, so I, I just, you know, because sometimes people just I, I see in comment section, they were, well, of course it made more. It had more that does. That's not necessarily the truth right there. Now, when we break, when we do the opening weekend showdown, um, we're going to do this by the day. Now, 
Black Panther on Thursday night had a $25 million opening, uh, which is great. Black Panther had a $39 million, not, no. Black Panther had a $25 million Thursday night preview. Avengers Infinity War had a $39 million um, a Thursday night preview, which is great. That was the most out of any superhero comic book films of all time as far as Thursday night previews. Now, The Force Awakens had like $55, $57 million, something like that on Thursday. And then like one of the Harry Potter movies. Uh, so now the th if you don't know, the Thursday's numbers are included in Friday. OK, so Friday, The Force Awakens had one hundred and nineteen million dollars. The Avengers Infinity War had one hundred and six. And so out of Jurassic World, The Avengers in 2012, The Last Jedi and Black Panther, none of those Fridays was over 100 million. But The Force Awakens 119, Avengers Infinity War 106. Saturday comes around. The Force Awakens has $68 million. Black Panther has $82 million. So I believe that is the highest Saturday of all time. Um, I could be wrong. Uh, that's probably what I kept. Probably, that's probably that's why I was reading his thing. I was wondering why I was reading his thing. Uh, and also on Sunday, which is this was an actual number is sixty nine million dollars. Now. What it is far too early to tell. Right. But so the Force Awakens had an opening of two hundred and forty seven million dollars. Right. And me personally, I enjoy Infinity War more than the Force Awakens, much more than the last Jedi. The last, The Force Awakens ended up making like what, $936 million domestically. Yeah, $936 million domestically. Could Avengers of Video War make that much domestically? It's possible, uh, but I don't know. Um, people are going, I mean, I don't, I hear more people talking about going to go see Avengers Infinity War uh, twice, more than once, than I did um, The Force Awakens. But again, that was two and a half years ago. I really don't remember, but man, it, it could. I mean, it's 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 tracking. It, it beat it on Saturday and Sunday. So the word of mouth, in my opinion, is better than it was on Friday. So, um, you know, I can't go any further on the showdown because it just opened this weekend. Um, you know, weekend here. Yeah, it won. And, you know, I can't do the week either. Uh, so let me see if there's anything else that I want to talk about real quick on the showdown. Um other than out of the six biggest openings of all time, uh, this was two hours and 36 minutes. So, you know, Alan Horn, the uh, the, the head, the, the head guy over film at Disney, um, Bob Iger, the CEO and all the other executives. OK, just because a movie is long does not make mean that people are not going to go see it. And I will touch on that in just a second. So let me go ahead and close this window out right here. Let me, I just feel like there's something important right here that I'm missing as far as uh, Infinity War having the best Saturday of all time. I, I mean, I want to quote that correctly. Looking ahead, it received the ace in the score. Audience were 58. What, what, is, what is Infinity War right now on uh, Rotten Tomatoes? I just want to see. Because, of course, that has to do with money, too. I mean, if, if something is doing gangbusters, okay, 84%. Uh, on uh, um, on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, average rating was seven point five out of ten. Um, come on, I need to get this working right. Um, out of man, two hundred and seventy nine reviews, two thirty five fresh Rotten Tomatoes, forty four. Now, guys, help me out with this on a uh, uh, besides box office. So I do reviews on YouTube, of course, and I also do them on my website. But I have not written a review since Black Panther. Because honestly, nobody reads them. Um, not no, it's probably my fault. Maybe they're not good enough. I don't know. And I, I, I applied to Rotten Tomatoes September of 2017 because I wanted to contribute to the Tomato Meter. They didn't reply back to like the end of December, beginning of no, beginning of January. And it was like basically you're not big enough. Um, you know, write for somebody else. You have like you know. Anyway. Since I brought up Rotten Tomatoes, help me, help me out. Go bookmark my website. Go like my Facebook page. There's a link to all that description box. It'll really help me out. Um, but let, let me, let me see. Let me go back here real quick to is, oh God, I should have. I'm trying to find out if Infinity War is the largest Saturday of all time. I actually, I, I can just go to all time real quick. I'm okay. All time. They got all time open the weekend. I don't think they have no all time Saturday. Uh, maybe they do. I'm, I'm just scrolling, guys. Thank you for your patience. Sorry that this is not completely... Okay, all time. Yeah. 
uh, all time for Saturday. So Star Wars The Force Awakens has the record for all time Friday. The Vengeance Infinity War has the record all time Saturday and all time Sunday. Right now, Black Panther has the all time record for Monday. Now, Black Panther still may hold on to that because that was President's Day weekend, so people was off work. Uh, yeah, I'm tripping this thing. This thing right here, man. I love this site, Box Office Mojo. They got everything that you can freaking uh, that, that you can freaking think of or whatever. So that's cool in the game right there. Uh, let's see here. Let's see what I want to talk about next, real quick. Uh, all right, let's 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 close this out right here. And let me close this out right here. Now let me talk about my baby black panther real quick you know what i'm saying that moved from number eight to number five on the drop that's i'm surprised right okay so right now i don't really care about foreign domestically i mean foreign black panther not gonna do much more internationally or whatever okay so domestic right now black panther is at 688 million dollars 688 364,917 uh dollars right just a little under 12 million dollars away from uh, hitting $700 million. I just wanted to do that so bad. I didn't think it was, but looking at these numbers now and it only dropping 4%, I mean, I, I think it's going to hit that $700 million. It might do that like right around mid-May. If it drops, I mean, yeah, it it, 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 it may do that. Uh, let me look at this real quick. Uh, actually... I have a okay. I knew I should have. I shouldn't have closed down the showdown thing real quick. So, when my showdown, when I look at the weekend, I really can't go off this because Black Panther is. It, it has a chance. I don't know. It's gonna. I, I'm, I'm just gonna say it's gonna hit that seven hundred. It's gonna hit the seven hundred million dollars domestically, and that's that's freaking fantastic. Uh, you know, you got some people. The uh, you know, I like to consider myself woke and conscious at the same time. But then you have some people that are like the super duper saying level nine God ultra instinct. All that money going to Disney anyway. It ain't going to black people. Yeah, I know that. But, I, you know, our money don't go to our community. No way. We only own like one point. F- Since the bring, I think at the end of the Civil War, black people in this country own like one point five percent of the nation's. no. One half of a half percent, not even a full percent. I think that's the same now. It may be a jump up to like 2.4 or something like that. So I'll make another video about that. I'm not going to, you know, because I'm passionate about it. But at the same time, you, you know, some people are, don't know how to pick their debates wisely. Uh, I, I, I'll talk about that some other time. Uh, so with Black Panther... Uh, let me see here real quick. My my phone. Wait, where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. My uh my computer is uh not acting uh the way it should be. Okay, so when I look at all 19 films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh. The Avengers Infinity War is still beating Black Panther domestically when you adjust for inflation. Black Panther's at 688. Marvel's the Avengers at 704. Um, you know, but, and it's right now, yeah, number three. Uh, it's the third highest of all time in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And something that I just want to look at real quick, guys. Um, if you look at the all time worldwide, I'm also going to look at adjusting for inflation for domestic. All time worldwide, Black Panther has moved from number ten to number nine. Number nine, the, it just passed Star Wars: The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi had one billion three hundred thirty-two million. Right now, Black Panther has one billion three hundred and thirty-three million. So that's what's up right there. Uh, number eight spot comes in at one billion three hundred and forty-one million. Black Panther is going to be that. Okay. Uh, worldwide i feel uh, it comes out on blu-ray i think may 18th it comes out on digital may 11th uh of course i'm gonna be getting a copy man i can't wait i cannot wait to look at them special features the deleted scenes the feature risk that commentary my god Woo, i cannot wait uh anyway so i think black panther is going to end up being number eight right and then 
for now. And then Avengers Infinity War is going to come and it's going to knock Black Panther to number nine. And then when Avengers Infinity Avengers 4 comes out, that's going to knock it down again to about number 10. So at the time, so May of 2019 or the end of the run, I am, unless I don't think the solo, unless it's the best Star Wars movie of all time, I don't think the solo is going to catch it. And I don't even know if solo is going to make a billion dollars. Uh, it might. Um, it looks good. I, I didn't care about it at first. But um, so at the end of Avengers 4, Avenity uh, Run, in the top 10, we're going to have one Marvel's The Avengers of Age of Ultron, Black Panther, and then the two Avengers film. Five of those films are going, five films in the top 10 of all time worldwide are going to be um, MCU films. Um, two of those are going to be Star Wars films. So Disney is winning. You know, still not being Avatar and Titanic and things like that. Um, so that's what's up. And lastly, what I want to look at is the uh, is the domestic for uh, Black Panther uh, and just it for inflation. OK, and right now, oh, it is at number 30 right there. Top 30 is six hundred eighty eight million dollars. Marvel's The Avengers is at number uh, 29 at 704. Uh, Titanic is still up there at number five, man. I mean, 1997, 1.2. It if, if movie tickets in 1997 were the same price as they are today, Titanic would have made $1.2 billion domestically. That's just freaking insane right there. Uh, and so... Y'all, I'm so super duper excited that Avengers Infinity War uh, opened up. Now, uh, I mean, it broke the record. That's what's up. Now, uh, I will also say, do I want to do this now or make a separate video? Uh, I'm just going to touch on it real quick, briefly. This movie, uh, while I loved Avengers Infinity War, it still should have been longer. Oh, excuse me. I do know that the executives and stuff... They're looking at, I mean, of course, they, they want to make money. Does This is a business. But my philosophy on this is if making money is always your number one goal, even if it is a business and you're trying to make a profit, if that is your number one goal is to make money, yes, you're going to make money. But if your number one goal is to make a, a, a good product, you will make even more money than you initially would. You know, even so... The reason why I say that is, is they got these executives and these big wigs and these studios. They're looking at it like, no, the, it, you know, it's going to turn people off if the movie is too long. People are not going to want to see it. Also, if it's too long, you can't you can't have so many showings playing per day. That is true, to, in my opinion, to an extent, but. More people would have saw this film if it was even better than what it is. I mean, the Avengers Infinity was a great film, but. One of the main complaints about it, even while everybody is universally praised and everybody loves it, is they felt that it was too much going on and that the film was rushed. I do agree. I don't I don't feel that it was just too much going on, but I do feel that it was rushed. We should have got more Captain America dialogue, like rallying the troops. We also should have got more Black Panther, T'Challa, Chadwick Boseman uh, dialogue, rallying the troops. Like, and remember I said this for spoilers. So when Captain America, Black Widow... Falcon, Vision, and Scarlet Witch show up at the Avengers uh, facility with uh, Rhodey, a uh, war machine, and General Thunderbolt Ross was there in the hologram. Um, and then Bruce came out. That was fine. There should have been much more dialogue and those scenes right there to connect all the dots. And then when they got to Wakanda, that thing was just rushed all the way through, which makes no sense to me. Uh, and somebody in my comments said, I'm, I'm going to, I don't want to spoil the surprise. So, what I don't understand is, Black Panther came out, right? Huge success, smash hit. Everybody knew it was going to be successful, but nobody knew it was going to be this successful, right? So, so since it was so successful, and, um, you know, during the first few weeks of Black Panther, it just seemed like a light bulb should have went off. Like, damn, everybody, we knew Black Panther was going to be good, but we didn't know it was going to be a this big of a hit majority of the film does take place in Wakanda in Infinity War. The film, the, the scenes that we already did shoot, let's go ahead and make sure that that stays in 
the movie and the finishes. Hey, uh, where my phone at? I don't got my. I can't. Oh, it's right here. We're gonna use the remote as a phone. Hey, uh, Russo brothers, Joe and Anthony. Uh, I know y'all. I know we was trying to cut down on time, but this Black Panther is a hit. Let's make sure we put as much Black Panther Wakanda in Avengers Infinity War so we can just make more money. Okay, you know, just you know, uh, make sure you know you can do it. Just make sure that the Chala's in there and Baku, Okoye, Shuri. Put them in the movie because people are going to go see this 10, 11,000 times, okay? We good? All, all right. You know, see you in May or see you in April 27th. I don't understand that. Now, somebody in my comment section was like, well, Brandon, um, they were not able to do that. They're not able to edit that fast. Yes, they are. What you don't know is, see, it would be there. I would agree with you if you were saying... They had to go do more research. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. I know for a damn fact. I don't know for a fact. I'm, I'm for damn sure that there was a ton of Wakanda stuff on the cutting room floor that we did not get to see in this theatrical uh, release with Avengers Infinity War. And when they are editing these films, guys, sometimes they come. the editing comes down to the last minute. Not every movie, but that's why I like listening to commentary so much. And I like the special features because you learn so much behind the scenes. Like, for example, when you saw Black Panther at the very beginning of the movie uh, where they had the uh, the CGI story where the uh, 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 in the Jaka, uh, Killmonger was like, father, tell me a story or tell me about home. Y'all know that was Killmonger talking to his father in Jobu. Um, and then they did the graphics where a long time ago, the vibranium thing came down and crashed and, you know, it told you a story. Sometimes things like that are put together literally 24 hours before the deadline, before they have to send the film off to the studio. There's sometimes they're editing these things at the last minute. So it just doesn't make sense for me. And when I was watching one of the interviews, the featurist with Joe and Anthony Russo, the Russo brothers, they won the Soldier Civil War and Avengers Affinity War. They exact words were, yes, we had to cut some scenes out for time. That pisses me off. I mean, thank you for the product you gave me, but that just lets me know. I know it wasn't Kevin, Kevin Feige and it wasn't Ike Perlmutter because uh, Kevin Feige don't have to report to him anymore. This was either Alan Horn, Bob Igo, some of these executives like, come on, come on. I, I know you want to do your movie, but can we can we cut some things down, please? Can we make it two hours, 2.30, 2.30, uh, 2.36 or whatever? They said cut it down. They didn't say we had to cut some scenes down because it was a better story. or We had to cut scenes out because it flowed better. Or we had to cut some scenes out because we thought this was unnecessary, blah, blah. They specifically said they cut some scenes out because of time. And that bothers me because I don't care. Honestly, like If somebody hears about a three-hour movie, they're going to be like, damn, three hours? I don't want to sit in no three-hour movie, no two-hour, 45-minute movie. But if everybody is rushing out of the theater saying that the movie is so freaking badass, amazing, they don't care, okay? They will go see that hoe. They will. I will. Everybody will. They don't care. And you have, if you don't have any proof of that, I can understand. But you have proof. You have Titanic. Titanic was over three hours. And it's one of the biggest movies of all time. Nobody, people, yeah, it was three hours, but the movie was freaking badass. And you need to go see it. And it's not like it was a surprise. Everybody knew that the ship sank. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just so passionate or whatever about this. Same thing with Avatar. Avatar's uh, thing was longer than the Avengers of Infinity War. $2.7 billion. If the movie is amazing, people will go see it. all Marvel films don't need to be two hours and 30 minutes long. I get that. But when you have a thousand billion characters in a film and you're doing this culmination thing, that's just something that you have to consider. Okay? Because instead of it being an 84 right now on Rotten Tomatoes, it could be a 94. Instead of making $257 million to open the weekend, you could have made $269 million to open the weekend. I saw it Thursday and Saturday. I would have saw it again Friday or Sunday, but I had to prepare for my trip. And also, all the uh, IMAX screens were sold out. And I, I'm like, you know, anyway. Uh, but I think y'all get my point. How long has this video been going on? Uh, I... Hold on, is this thing not recording? Oh, shoot. Oh, no, okay, I am recording. God, I was, ooh, man. My bad, y'all. Okay, so what I want to do real quick, guys, is uh, I just decided to do this today. Uh, also, guys, right now, I'm at 4,871 subscribers. I'm almost at 5,000. Uh, you know, please subscribe to my channel. Help me get to 5,000. I would really appreciate it. But what I want to do right now is I'm on my own YouTube page. Uh, I'm looking at my Avengers Infinity War video that I uploaded yesterday. 
And I just want to go through and read some comments uh, because I just think that's kind of fun. I just want to respond to you guys this way. Uh, if I don't read your comment, don't take offense. Um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm trying to make, just, yeah, don't take offense if I don't read your comment. Um, you're easily my favorite. Okay. I'm fluffing on myself. Thank you very much. Uh, Brandon, E. Starkey writes, Brandon, my king, T'Challa, Black Panther is gone. Yo, I can't, I can't emoji crying face. I feel you, my brother, but, uh, he is coming back. Um, Omo Shun 94602 writes, I hated the way Hulk acted. It was just not him. Only person I felt sorry for was Spider-Man because he technically still a child and he really didn't want to die. His scene was sad. I agree with you wholeheartedly uh, on uh, the Spider-Man thing that was sad. Uh, I do watch John Campia's uh, podcast and things like that. He was saying that he was disappointed in Tony because uh, Tony's like, dude, this is a child. and You're having him fighting the war and things like that. That's not how I played in the film. So, you know, I like how they did that. Uh, I did not, I do disagree with you. I don't hate how the Hulk acted. Uh, he just got his ass whooped. I mean, this is Thanos, the mad Titan. Uh, so he's scared to come out. And so I really do feel like they are setting up Hulk to have, like, you know, in this movie, Thor had a badass entrance. You know what I'm saying? Just badass. I mean, he came through just wrecking shop. I loved it. I really feel like they're going to be doing that for the Incredible Hulk or Hulk and Avengers 4. If they don't do it, I'm going to be angry. Like, oh my gosh. But, you know, like, I really feel like I really just want to see Hulk come through there and just boom, just smash the hell out of everything. You know, just like, ah, like world breaker Hulk to where after he beats the bad guys, he turns on the Avengers because he does not have control over it. So I am going to be patient there. Uh, I like your new background. Uh, uh, final Cut Fro. Uh, I like your new background. We will see what the final numbers is Monday morning. I think Word of Mouth really helped Infinity War. I told every person I know to go see it this weekend to avoid spoilers. Plus, many big people are going to see it multiple times. Keep up the great work. Uh, I've been busy. I haven't seen a review yet, but I'll check it out. Well, yeah. Uh, I, you know, I'm not in the background now. That background that you're talking about in that particular video, that's just because it was a comic book movie. I'm going to switch it back to my other stuff. Uh, yeah, okay. I was mad. Uh, AP writes, I was mad at Thor for not getting Thanos before he took out the stone from Vision. Um, yeah, you know, you could look at, but, you know, he was taking down ships and all that stuff right, that last shot before. So, you know, I'm not too upset about that. Um, but with Thanos, not him. Uh, but, okay, Sherry responds to the comment, but with Thanos not having we round time anyway, no, no matter what, Thor came after him. Uh, once he had the time stone, I felt like there was nothing anyone could do. They could in it, in it do it to save. Uh, I felt like there was nothing anyone could do at that point. Save aim for his head. Like uh, he said, my fault. I misread you and you didn't write back. Uh, yeah, um, but he could have chopped his arm off. He could have did this. They could have stopped him from closing his foot, uh, his fist. I mean, like the way the time stone works is it only takes time back from like a, a certain vicinity unless you have the power stone to uh, enhance, uh, enhance it, which he did. But if Thanos doesn't know to do that, then that's on him. So somebody else could have sniped him from a long, you know, from far back or something to stop him from using the time stone. You know, I don't know. Um, even though Thanos told him to chop off that. Okay, let's see. What's my one we'll go? Yeah, when spider. Uh, my baby B15, when Spider-Man was telling Tony he didn't want to go, I shed a few thug tears. RIP Spider-Man, see you next year in the next movie. I feel you, man. Uh, what happened? Uh, Def Rocker says, what happened to Wanda's accent? Very good point. Nobody knows. That is a mystery. Uh, Elaine P. writes, why was Thor asking Thanos, what did you do? It was like Thor knew something and no one else did. Is it, I mean, he knew what he, I mean, well, he knew he did something. He snapped his fingers. I mean, you, you know, so, and it was like a big flash. So he, he's just like, damn, something is messed up. You know, he didn't possibly know what he did exactly, but he knew something was up. Uh, Def Rocker. It would have been Def, it would have been dope if Silver Surfer was introduced in the post credit scene. I disagree with you, sir. I mean, it would have been fine, but it would have been completely unnecessary. And, um, uh, I mean, they did that with uh, Captain Marvel, but we knew her movie was coming. You know what I'm saying? So maybe if it was a Silver Surfer movie instead, you know, that, that would have sufficed. That would have sufficed. But 
Um, trying to see what the group Hulk one. Yeah, uh, Death Rocker also writes the trailer scene with the group with Hulk running and Wakanda wasn't in the movie. I know that pisses me off. The false advertising. Uh, nor nor King or New York King. This movie left me feeling mad at King T'Challa for opening up Wakanda to the damn world. We were good before that. LOL. Why T'Challa? Why? Uh, I feel you on that. I, I do uh, for a number of reasons that I'm not going to talk about in this video because I would be talking for about three hours. But uh, if we're reading between the lines. Um, I do kind of feel you there. Uh, that's another reason why we needed more dialogue with Wakanda in this movie. Because early, we was hearing the Russo brothers talking about like how in uh, featurettes and interviews with Okoye talking about, yeah, you know, uh, she's a traditionalist. She doesn't believe in opening up the borders. But all we got is the Olympics and that Star Wars, Starbucks joke. Boo, Starbucks. You know why. Uh, anyway. That's just why I feel that there should have been more dialogue because I wanted to see a scene with Akoya just talking about, say, T'Challa, man, like, it's not our fight. And he's like, no, it is our fight. It's the second universe. And that, I just wish we I just wish we would have had that. Um, official final round. Great review, sir. One of the most underrated movie critics on YouTube. I hope you get more subscribers and popularity so you can go get invited to more premieres. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Um, okay, Christina L., you are, I think you are one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this. Uh, Star Lord, uh, Christina L. writes, Star Lord wasn't being a dumbass. Did you watch volume two? He flipped out when his dad revealed he killed his mom. If someone killed my loved one and was right in front of me, I go berserk. If Quill sat around, then they get the gauntlet, and then the movie ends on a happy note, and people would be. Comp if Quill sat around, then they get the gauntlet, and the movie ends on a happy note. And people would complain it was too safe. Doctor Strange could have rewound time, but he didn't. It's part of the plan. No, um, I dis. With all due respect, I disagree with you, Christina L. Yes, I did see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, and when he found out that uh, his father killed his mother and planted her with cancer, yeah, he went berserk. But he had every right to. It was just a one-on-one -on -one fight right there in this film. The little, the not the world, not the galaxy, because these are guardians of the galaxy. The literal universe was at stake, and the only way you can beat this person that is trying to erase half the universe is to get the gauntlet off of his hand. So I don't care if you're mad. I don't care if you murdered your mama. Yo, it, it, no. If, if you murdered your mom, dad, right in front of you, and murdered your whole people, no. Get the gauntlet off first. Use the gauntlet against them, though. So, what if you got everything right there? If they could have took the gauntlet. He could the Peter Quill. Oh, you want to kill? You want to kill Gamora? Okay, let me get this gauntlet off your hand. Then I'm a eviscerate. That's just that's just ridiculous. That I'm I'm sorry. He was being a dumbass. He let his emotions get in control of him. Uh, that, that was just uh, that was just crazy. And as far as um, uh, Doctor Strange knowing the outcome or whatever. That was after the fact that we found that out after he gave the time tone to Tony. That to me had nothing to do. Yeah, I'm gonna let uh, Peter Quill be a dumbass and, and mess up our plan, right? No, 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 no. Um, I, I, I just don't I don't see it like that. Um who is this? Uh now somebody responded to that comment. Biggest asshole ever, S T S, that's his name. Just my opinion, reason no. The OP is correct. Doctor Strange knew he had to end that way. It did in order for them to win. That's why he gave Thanos the stone. I understand that. This version is one of the outcomes where they win before he watched every possible outcome. He told Tony he would let him and Spider Man die to protect after his vision. If that's the case, I disagree. But if that's the case, then that just goes to bad writing because they literally almost had the glove all they had to do is get it glove off and put it on then they they win they could they could have destroyed thanos they could have sent him over here they could have turned him into clay you know all that um musical freak 1991 overall that is right but i like the way star lord reacted after thanos got the time stone he didn't seem to know what the end game was i agree i'm right only dr strange knew the turmoil the turnout was going to be given a time stone to Thanos. So based off, yeah, I agree with all that. It felt pretty dumb. Star Lord risked the universe. Yeah, yeah, he risked the universe. Uh, Fangle the pirate, Fangle the pirate, Fox Mantis turned into Dust Two. 
Tony and Nebula was the only two left on Titan. I must have said something wrong, uh, but yes, that is correct. Uh, Marianne Solomon writes, would love to listen, but can't deal with all the snorting, sniffling, and smacking. I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know what was wrong with me yesterday or the day before. Uh, Dr. Strange seen Tony saying today. Okay. It's a good point right here. CEO Model 82. The only thing that had me thinking was the Infinity Stones are so powerful. I didn't understand why Doctor Strange and Vision had so much trouble beating the children of Thanos without a stone. I mean, Doctor Strange was going toe to toe with Thanos for a minute and he had four stones but couldn't beat Ebony Maw who had no stone. What do you think? That's a very good question. Now, as far as, um, let me read it again. Um, I don't understand why. Okay, Vision had a problem fighting uh, Corvus Glaive because before the fight started off, he just got stabbed in the chest or in the back, through the chest. And that was, you know, so that stopped him from phasing right there. And he tried to shoot Corvus Glaive with the, the Mind Stone, but he was able to uh, deflect it with his Glaive or whatever, his, his Scythe or whatever it was. So he was a, 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 an important foe. Uh, as far as Thanos and having, let me, uh, so many trouble with the children of Thanos. See, to me, Doctor Strange did not have trouble fighting. Well, I guess he did. I mean, he did get taken away. They say that, uh, well, Doctor Strange had the time stone. So he, if you saw the Doctor Strange movie, Doctor Strange and doesn't really like going, playing with time unless it's absolutely necessary. Because you're breaking the, the natural order of law, which is what uh, Chit would tell Edgy of Forest character said in that movie. Uh, but this fight between Doctor Strange and Ebony Maw was pretty even. But Ebony Maw is just so damn powerful uh, to my understanding. I don't know much about him, but my little research, he's just, he's just, his telekinesis power was just, you know, just that dope. I mean, he can just do whatever he wants with a flick of a finger. He doesn't have to struggle like Magneto or something like, or, you know, controlling metal, uh, you know, but telekinesis is better controlling metal. You can control everything. As far as, um, you know, me and Dr. Strange was going toe to toe with Thanos and he had four stones. Well, true. Thanos, like I said, it's one of those things to me, and this could be bad writing. I could be making excuses. If you don't, even if you have great power, that does not mean that you know how to use it. You know what I'm saying? And that was just one of the cases, you know, for me in this movie with Doctor Strange and Thanos, because I was thinking about that too. And when I was running, I was like, okay, Thanos is this powerful then and here and there. You know, good points. Um, but yeah, Doctor Strange did lose the fight to Ebony Maw in the streets. I don't think he's just struggled. I think it was a good fight, but very, very good question. How long have we been going on? Okay, 48 minutes. Guys, I don't want this video to be that long, and reading questions like this is pretty fun. I'm not, man, what I might do is I may go through it, because the reason why it's taking so long is because I didn't read all these and I don't want to be going through reading it to myself to make sure it's a good question or something I didn't already answer and then going back. And, you know, that's just going to take too long. So I may go, I may just find questions and copy and paste them into a list and just randomly, you know, make videos throughout the week. Let's like, hey, I got some YouTube questions, you know, here I'm going to answer them. These are the best 10, the best 20, whatever. Uh, but guys, that is just my opinion of Avengers Infinity War, Black Panther, uh, and I'm finna say Black Panther Infinity War. This is just my opinion of Avengers Infinity War spoilers, Avengers Infinity War box office, Black Panther box office, me wanting an extended cut of the movie and all that good stuff. Uh, you know, usually some graphics and things are gonna pop up, but I'm not in my normal space. But guys, I just really wanna thank you guys for tuning in to hear all my thoughts, just my opinion on everything. I really do appreciate it. Um, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Uh, you know, what do you think about all these numbers or what I have to say? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. Um, and uh, please do. I'm almost at 5,000 subscribers. I really appreciate it. Uh, you can also go to my website. Even though you don't, don't go to my website. I ain't posting nothing in 
two and a half months. Uh, but you can also go to my, uh, look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of your screen, and I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to uh, my uh, opinion on these box office numbers and Avengers Infinity War and Black Panther as a whole. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.